not submit the declaration. When I ran for the European parliamentary election three years ago, I fulfilled all the, of the requirements of the election law, including submitting the vetting statement. I was chosen, it was recognized by the National Election Commission and the European Parliament proclaimed myself as one of its members. During the past three years, did not occur any circumstance that could influence my ability to hold the office. Renewed demand to submit the vetting statement under the threat of extinction of the parliamentary seat, I consider as an inconsistency with the rule of law and disregard to a decision of over 120,000 voters. It is also in contradiction with the constitutional rule of respect for human dignity. I was told that the vetting legislation had a moral goal. I do not agree with this, that opinion. I think the legislation in its present form violates moral principles, puts in danger freedom of speech, media independence, and academic institutions, institutions' autonomy. I delayed public announcement of my decision as I wanted to make it an act of my individual protest. I declare full understanding for those who share my point of view, but this, did decide to submit the vetting statement again. I hope that the democratic forces will lead to change of the unjust laws and will save the good reputation of Poland. My decision is an appeal for reflection and responsibility directed towards the present government, and it is a hope for a civil activity. To the imperative demand of humble subordination, I have only one question, answer, I refuse. April 2007, Bronisław Geremek. Democracy is not a value that is given forever. Uh, we have to protect it in order not to lose it. I think that the uh, Geremek Award uh, reflects the moral hierarchy of my father. Thank you very much indeed. Distinguished guests, please join me in welcoming to the podium former United States Secretary of State, Madam Madeleine Albright. Madam Albright, the floor is yours. Excellencies and friends, good afternoon, and Martin, it is an honor to be here with you. I am very pleased to be here and honored to participate in this, the 10th anniversary of the Community of Democracies. The setting for our gathering could not be more appropriate because as has been noted, no country is more closely associated with the quest for freedom than Poland, and few countries have paid a higher price to secure it. In decades past, the Polish people have had to endure aggression and occupation, partition and massacres. And in recent weeks, they have had to recover from a shocking tragedy. Democracy's value as a source of national unity has rarely been so dramatically displayed as here in this country over the past two and a half months. The plane crash, though devastating, has neither weakened democracy's hold nor lessened Poland's commitment to the rule of law and further evidence uh, will be the election tomorrow. I have to say I'm delighted to be in Krakow and have the opportunity to see Lech Walesa. I first saw him here 30 years ago. His hair was darker, his mustache was a little longer. My hair, of course, does not change color. Uh, <clears throat> and so it is wonderful to see him here and to know what he did for democracy. Um, it is also fitting to celebrate the community of democracies here because when the first conference was held, many predicted that it would be our last. Some felt that such a community was not needed because with the Berlin Wall down, democracy had already triumphed. Others argued that the process of convening a group was undesirable because it would cause friction over whom to include. And still others, warned that it would be naive to place too much faith in democracy when the world would always be governed more by interests than by ideals. As it happened, the community of democracies proved an extremely successful experiment. And those who came to Warsaw with doubts left with new grounds for enthusiasm. And the primary reason was our host, Foreign Minister Bronislaw Geremek. 
Mr. Garemek spoke to us from his own life experience concerning the value of freedom and also its fragility. In his welcoming remarks, he declared that, and I quote, the emergence of democracy was the most important development of the 20th century. But he also reminded us that the gift of freedom was never fully safe, because from one direction or another, the principles of freedom will always be opposed. He argued, therefore, that those who are blessed to live in a democracy have an obligation to repay that blessing by upholding free institutions and by teaching, protecting, and cherishing democratic values. He urged us to recognize that whether we were going to the polls in Santiago, broadening civil society in Bamako, exercising our right to peaceful dissent in Seoul, or strengthening political parties in Ulaanbaatar, we are all part of the same democratic community. And above all, he taught us, in any language, solidarity is a beautiful concept. Through solidarity, established democracies can come closer to fulfilling their potential. And struggling democracies can find the help they need to deliver on freedom's promise. And future democracies can draw inspiration in their quest for social progress and political change. This was the Gremic formula for building and preserving democracy. And it is the basis for the 2010 Bronislav Gremic Award. Father Jose Conrado Rodriguez is minister to a parish in the impoverished city of Santiago de Cuba. For decades, Father Jose has served his community as a healer and an educator. He felt hope, as did I, when in 1998, Pope John Paul visited Cuba, prompting memories of that same Pope's visit here to Poland two decades earlier. As Secretary Clinton noted, Pope John Paul did not ask permission, and neither did Father Jose. In his arrival speech, His Holiness prayed, may Cuba, with all its magnificent potential, open itself to the world, and may the world open itself to Cuba. Unfortunately, that process of opening has gone forward much more slowly than all of us had hoped, and in 2005, Father Jose wrote a letter to President Fidel Castro urging the introduction of democratic mechanisms. Last year, he found it necessary to write again, this time to Raul Castro, proposing that he respond to change with new approaches and new attitudes. Father Jose's eloquence and courage provide a number of lessons that are relevant to the community of democracies. First, they remind us that not every measure taken to support democracy yields desired results immediately. What we know is that we have to keep working, and U.S. law should make change in Cuba easier. We have changed laws, and we are working towards helping the people of Cuba. Second, Father Jose reminds us that democracy at its best is more than just another system of government. Real democracy is built on a moral foundation. It is based on respect for the rights and dignity of every human being, no matter how humble or how disadvantaged that person might be. Democracy is grounded in a belief that the legitimate power of governance comes not from the barrel of a gun, or from the means to arrest and to brutalize prisoners, or from the capacity to punish those who dare to voice their discontent. Power to be legitimate must come from the people. More than 100 years ago, Jose Marti said that it is my dream for every Cuban to engage in politics in an entirely free manner. I think I speak for everyone associated with the community of democracies in expressing my faith that this dream will one day be realized and that democracy and justice will indeed come to Cuba. When it does, it will be because of the quiet leadership of people such as Father Jose Conrado who are showing every day that the real test of a Democrat is to respect human dignity and to believe in one another. And that is the standard in which Bronislav Goremek, my good friend Bronek, placed his faith. That is the core premise of the community of democracies, and it is why Father Jose Conrado is the most deserving recipient 
of this year's Bronislav Goremek Award. Thank you very, very much.